Now everyone knows about 3D movies and gaming, but not all of you will have experienced 3D sound. And I don't just mean stereo or surround sound, I mean audio recorded with ears in the same way we experience sound in real life. Hello again, I'm here with the audio experience design team and Kat Paul from Imperial College London, and I'm all ears to find out what you have been doing. So Kat, what is this all about? So essentially we want to make sound, sound immersive. And so right. when we're listening in the real world, like from me standing next to you, um, you use your two ears together. And so we, if you have a sound that's coming to the right of you, it'll be louder in your right ear compared to your left ear. Yeah. It'll also arrive at this ear quicker than this ear. But what do you do when sounds are coming in this plane? So yeah. it's always going to be the same. This is when we use the shape of our ears and sort of the head and our torso to really help us figure out where sounds are coming from. Because if a sound is coming from below, it will bounce around slightly differently than if a sound is coming from above. Right. But we don't have the same head and the same ear shape. And so if we wanted to make a really immersive spatial sound scene for you, then we want to be able to replicate how sound bounces around your individual body. So the way that we do that is we take a 3D scan of your head and your shoulders, and then we simulate with some physics models how the sound bounces around for you in every single position. So then we can create a sort of sonic fingerprint for you, and then we can apply that to any sound that we record and say what position it's coming from. That is brilliant. Now I am a sucker for an immersive experience and you're telling me that you can scan my ear so then I can get an audio experience that is not only immersive but is super personalized for me. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it Kat, I am on board. <laughs> where do I need to go, what do I need to do? Well, you're gonna come around the side into this booth and this is where we do the ear scanning. Right. And I sit on this stool, right? Yes, so if you come sit on this stool, and so okay. I will just set up the scanner. Uh, this is the scanner that we use, and it uses a flashing light. And so if we present the flashing light, hopefully you can see my hand on the screen. Well, that's great, yeah? So we're going to do exactly the same for your ear. So if I can get you to face forwards, yeah. and then I will come round. And if you can close your eyes, and I'm just going to move the scanner around your head and build a 3D model. OK. Eyes are closed. I'm ready. There we go. So yeah, as I move it around, it tracks where it's scanned, and then I can angle the light, and then we can get a good picture of your ear. Okay, so you're just moving it across it's my perfect. ear now. And so the light shines in every sort of crook and crevice, and it sort of builds up a 3D model oh gosh. of your ear. Every crook and crevice. Yep. <laughs> oh no. And so I'm going to stop Brilliant. now. Okay, and can and I then, move? Yeah, now you can move, and okay. now it's all done. So. And is this it processing the exactly. data? Exactly, it's processing the data, it's taking all the sort of, it builds little points, and then after that it meshes it together into a nice 3D model that then we can either look at, or we can print it out on a 3D printer if you really wanted to. So Amazing. Oh, okay, let's go and have a look. Let's, oh, I'm a bit nervous. Oh. <laughs> this is my ear, like I have never seen it, and it is, Oh my gosh, the details and like the ear piercing, you can see so much. I've never, it's a part of your body that you just never see. No, you never get to see it yourself because it's on the side of your head. Oh my word, that is absolutely fascinating. And you use this to, I suppose, reverse engineer the immersive experience to make it personalized. Yeah, exactly. We can just simulate how the sound bounces around in your ear and then create that fingerprint for you. That is brilliant. Roma, I do hope you are listening to all of that because no doubt I will test you later. But for now, it's back to you. Oh, Fran, I don't like having tests, um, but I am thrilled to have a psychoacoustic specialist, Lorenzo Piccinali, here to tell us a little bit more about what Fran just did. Lorenzo, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. What is 3D sound? <laughs> Uh, 3D sound or immersive sound is effectively what we experience in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So you walk on the street and you hear sounds that come from different positions at different distances in different directions, they move differently. And all these attributes about the spatial nature of sounds or the position and etc. is what we generally refer to as 3D sound or immersive sound. Now normally with these two expressions we refer to us simulating this in a virtual environment. An idea could be when you go to the cinema, you listen to this surround sound, double surround, and there you have 
a lot of different loudspeakers around you that reproduce sound and you perceive the sound coming from different directions. So that is the concept. But you need lots of speakers in order to well, in that case, that so yes. Far? Yes. So I would say that the majority of the techniques, also at home, you might have multiple loudspeakers. Yeah. Now, what we are trying to do is uh, uh, starting from the point that we actually hear everything from two ears. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go directly to the two ears, maybe with a pair of headphones and try to trick your brain to believe that there is something in a position where there is not. Franz just had her head scanned. Yes. What, what's, why did she do that and what's going to happen next? Now, in order to, to run this simulation and to really trick people to believe that there are sounds where they are not, we need to take into account certain morphological features of our ear and head. So our head, our pinna, which is this part of the ear, but also the shoulders, the fact that, for example, I don't have much hair, uh, but I have beard. All these things are going to influence the way uh, that sound is modified by these features and the way my brain uh, understands where sound is coming from. So you and me will hear things quite differently. Yes, definitely. Of, of, of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a very big head because I'm very intelligent, a lot of you brain are. to be you kept are. inside. <laughs> and therefore I will have bigger differences in terms of, for example, intensity in between the two ears. So we scan the ear, we scan the head, and then we use certain mathematical methods in order to find out how from a given position in space, the sound is modified up to the entrance of your ear canal. And eventually, uh, we, well, even now we are starting training uh, neural network models, so artificial intelligence, in order to be able to predict what is someone's own signature from less and less data. Okay. Eventually it could just be a picture or even it could just be some data that you input in the, in the device. So trying to make it easier to basically figure out that person's individual characteristics to give them the sound um, based on all this data that you're collecting. Exactly, yeah. to make it much easier than it is at the moment and that we can do at the moment. So I've got some headphones here. Um, should, I, should I stick them on? Is that the you plan? You should definitely yeah? try. Okay, let's this, have a go. So this is just some of the demonstrations that we use, yeah. which are actually available for who visits our stand and they are available also online. Yeah. Headphones are important because we need the left signal to get to your left ear and the right signal to go to your right ear, which doesn't happen with a normal pair of loudspeakers. If you want to listen along, pop your headphones in and you'll be able to hear what I am about to hear now. Good morning. I'm here in front of you. Or maybe I'm close to your right ear. Maybe I'm here. Or here. Or again, I could be here. Or here. Or here. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> the other side. Or back in front of you. Um. <laughs> That was a particularly strange experience because I, yeah. I was listening to your voice. To my voice, whispering kind and of talking moving, around. But so it was like you were on different sides of me, yeah. but also closer and farther away. Yes. Um, but clearly I could see you there, so my brain was a little bit confused. Yeah, that, that is what lightly. often happens. Uh, <laughs> well, not unfortunately, but sight often takes over. This is why it's often difficult to, to have a clear sound image that is frontal. When people experience this, they often hear sources on the back because mm. they can't clearly see something on the front, so they believe that it's on the back. Yeah. Closing your eyes helps in these cases. Oh, yeah, maybe. It's <laughs> a bit disconcerting. Um, so is this going to be a big feature of the entertainment industry? Well, it already is to a certain extent. I mean, Apple's latest products, their, their ear pods, they already have some of this technology. Now, we don't know exactly what they do, uh, but uh, they do something in this direction. And it is possible that now with Dolby Atmos and all these new things, both from the, from the audiovisual and, and the music industry, will allow more of this technology to be available. It's also true when I started this research in this field 20 years ago, headphones were not as widely used as now. If you go on the tube, more than half of the people are going to have a pair of headphones. I had a student who had a pair of headphones that was in, even connected to something. It was just a fashion statement. <laughs> so people have headphones. And if you have headphones, then we can do this. So hopefully they're going to become much more, uh, it's going to become a little bit much more mainstream mm. and more integrated, for example, with video game experiences and, and other things. And yeah. it might become available soon. Oh, that's very exciting. And um, what about outside of entertainment? Yeah, outside of entertainment, this is actually the area where we have done more work. So applying this uh, technology to create impact in, let's say, non-leisure activities. So we have used these, for example, for uh, developing auditory displays for blind people. 
Uh, uh, but more recently, we have worked a lot with hearing aid companies. And actually, one of the other projects, the other project that we are showing here at the Royal Society is uh, called BES, and uh, which stands for both ears. And it involves the development of uh, a, a series of video games, a virtual reality video games, where we employ these techniques. What we're trying to do is to replicate what happens in real life scenarios, specifically in difficult situations where you have, for example, multiple talkers and a target that you want to listen to. And we are uh, planning to use these games for uh, children and teenagers that had um, a bilateral cochlear implant. Mm. Um, so when you have these sort of digital ears that are surgically implanted, you have both ears. The two ears might be rather mismatched for many reasons. So not only maybe one ear is louder than the other, but you might also have a different pitch and slightly different timbre. So often the brain is not really able to, to, to fuse the two together. And so we are using a series of games that can be performed only by using both ears at the same time to help them train to use the two implants and to remap their auditory system so that the brain is able to use these altered cues more successfully. I always love a piece of engineering or science that um, has entertainment value, but also medical applications. So um, thank you so much for joining me, Lorenzo. It's been great to hear about your research. OK, thank you very much. Um, now. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Fran will be going on a special mission deep into the archives of the Royal Society to discover some of its treasures. <laughs> 